Hi, welcome again. Uh, in this video, we're going to have a look at what is customer equity and why it's so important to marketing. Okay, I'm showing a diagram here from the Journal of Marketing from 2004, which is basically talking about overall return on marketing investment. And down the bottom here, we've got increased customer equity as effectively being the finish line of what we do. So I just walk through this. So basically we spend money on marketing, as we know, and the model has driver improvements. They're the things that we do. So our various marketing actions and playing around with our marketing mix and our campaigns, etc. All of those things are designed to basically first change attitudes, positioning, perceived value. So customer perceptions need to change and that uh, will change consumer behavior. Okay, so actions down here, attraction, so we'll get more new customers and increased loyalty of existing customers. That means that for the average customer or the average segment that we have, we will have increased customer lifetime value. The combination of all of those customers with their customer lifetime value increasing provides what's called customer equity increase which is a financial measure and then we look at okay how much profitability is in our customer base uh, how, how much have we improved it by and then we look at okay what have we spent okay to work out a return on investment now <clears throat> to make sense of that that prior model and, and the role of customer equity i've got a model here i've constructed about the ideal pathway for a, a new customer. So basically, a customer starts out not knowing anything about our brand. They become aware of our brand. They understand our positioning a little bit and got some sense of what we are. Uh, hopefully, they they form a, a an attitude that, oh, yeah, they sound okay. They sound like a good product or a good opportunity. And eventually, hopefully, some of those customers are actually biased for the first time uh, and trial the product. Uh, after purchase, obviously they've had direct experience with us as a company, uh, then their attitude hopefully strengthens and they become a long-term buyer. Now that's the ideal pathway. I've also mapped out various um, other, other possibilities, which is not ideal, but basically we're trying to move people through here. These ones down here never really become aware, uh, never warm to us, never quite understand what we're doing or never actually trial the product or those here who trial the product and then uh, don't think it's actually pretty good um, <clears throat> but we're trying to move along here okay so if I go back to the the model that was in the journal of marketing basically what we're trying to do in our marketing spend um, we're going to measure things overall we are doing a lot of things here we've got products we've got campaigns um, <clears throat> market expansion, etc. Now, each of those we could probably measure on a single return on investment basis for a campaign. But when we're doing so many things at the same time for a large company, it is really difficult to tell what is impacting what. So what we do is we go, okay, let's look at our customer base overall, okay? So each time we do these things, we should be seeing some improvement in customer lifetime value. Either lower acquisition costs, improved spend, cross-selling, greater loyalty, etc. So what we try to do is has marketing, and it may say it's spent you know, X amount per year, has it made the business more valuable? So what we do is we compare uh, a customer equity valuation. So it's the sum of all uh, customer lifetime values in the past and what is it today and how much is the profitability of that customer base likely to have increased by the result of our marketing activities so basically is the business more valuable as a result of all the stuff that we've done okay now customer equity is a very good approximation of profitability now customer equity is customer lifetime value over time so the expected current and long-term profits from dealings with our customers, so the sum of all their customer lifetime values. Okay, so for our customer base, how much money are we going to make over a period of time of the lifetime? 
and it's the fundamental uh, piece of profitability. Obviously, in terms of profits, what a company reports, they're looking at an annual basis. Customer equity looks over a period of time. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that we incur, like fixed costs, borrowing costs, irrespective of whether or not we have customers, so that muddies the water a little bit. There's often accounting adjustments. Some companies invest a lot of money and get uh, investment income rather than money from um, from customers only. And of course, depending on the uh, the government, there's various tax rates and subsidies, etc. But generally, the fundamental component of profitability is customer equity. Okay, so we can't match it exactly because of these factors, but customer equity should demonstrate how profitable the business will be over time. Okay, so customer equity is basically a calculation that adds up uh, some of lifetime values of all current customers, which is how long they're going to be a customer for, etc., and also all future customers. Now, that's a bizarre thing. Why are we including future customers? The reason is part of marketing is brand building and building retailer connections and building well-regarded products, etc. So as we do that, we are ensuring that we will get future customers. A lot of our marketing efforts, if it's brand building based, is really not about today's customers. It's about the customers that will come in next week and the, the week after. So there are you know, car manufacturers and maybe phone manufacturers, etc., who will get a customer dealing with them in the first, for the first time ever in six months, 12 months, three years' time because that customer now has a need for that product and has been attracted to them by the brand. So our ability to generate long-term profits is built in the customer equity as well. Okay, so how do, how do we get there? How do we build up? This is a, a pyramid approach, value, brand, relationship. And I've just got a more detailed slide here for you. At the starting point, I've reversed. It's a starting point. Our base of that pyramid is, do we provide value? You know, do we are our products, you know, good quality products, innovative? Can we compete on price? Do we have convenience, etc.? Fundamental of customer equity, um, getting people to come to us is, is having something of value. Then, as we get, get that in place, we go to the next layer, which is brand equity. Okay, where so companies uh, build brand awareness, positive attitudes. Uh, so customers say, "Hey, that's a good brand. I like dealing with them. That they they look after the environment. They're a great place to to deal business with." And basically, that is very much a loyalty factor and an attraction factor. And then finally, we've got this relationship equity, okay? And it's the tendency of the customer to be loyal to the brand beyond uh, basically a fair assessment. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of fa factors that we might build into what's called a CRM or a customer relationship management program. Uh, the difference between a brand and a relationship here, they're, I suppose, very logically loyal to some extent. So if Apple was to bring out a, a, a dad a product that didn't work, a bad product, um, the people who the consumers who like Apple who go will go, oh well, that's going to happen. They're an innovative company, um, you know, they're, they're risk takers. These things happen from time to time, and they actually uh, excuse the brand or accept that the brand's going to do that because they are so strongly tied to the brand. Okay, so that basically that's it. It's a customer equity is a financial metric. It's derived directly from customer lifetime value, and it's the centerpiece of marketing in terms of justifying what we do from all our marketing spend over time.